exciting new thing for y'all to check out today. Banggood has been gracious enough to send me the Chaser 88. This is a brushless two cell micro quad and it's just about the size of my brushed micro quads but it's brushless and has gobs more power. It comes with an extra set of 20 30 by 3 props. These props are definitely bigger than anything else I've used and they have uh, 1.5 millimeter shaft spacing so you can't use these on the brush motors because the hole's too big. It comes with a charger that you can plug into USB and it charges through the balance plug this two cell 450 mAh battery. Uh, it comes with a rubber band to hold the battery to the bottom and of course the star of the show is the Chaser 88. This thing is pretty feature packed, it's crazy. It has 10,000 kV Racer Star motors, uh, it's got a all-in-one ESC with the flight controller stacked on top. Everything's pre-wired and then it comes with a FPV camera mounted on top. It's got this cool little 3D printed mount and that actually, I'm pretty impressed. It looks like it's a really good design and it's going to hold up to a good beating. And you've got a nice carbon fiber frame. You've got an LED bar with a beeper on the back. This thing just has a ton of features that you don't normally get on a quad this size. So I'm excited to plug it all in and give it a go. So even though this comes with almost everything you need, you need to have a controller, you need to have some FPV goggles, and you need to have a receiver for your controller. So this little cable right here, that goes to the receiver.
Okay, so after flying the Chase Radiator around for a little bit, would I recommend you getting one? Is it worth your money? Well, yes, it definitely is. Going from brushed motors to brushless motors makes a huge difference, and I think you're going to love what the Chase Radiate has all put together. Now, before I keep gushing about how much I like it, I do want to talk about a couple things that I noticed that I did not like. Now, right off the bat, the tune was unflyable. It was really bad. So, um, you can look down in the description and I'll give you my PIDs for what I found works really well. Uh, once I got past that, then I ran into a problem with the stock antenna, which is a three-lobe circular polarized antenna, and I was just not getting very good range. I, it would get a lot of static, so I put a new antenna on and then all those problems went away. If you do have some static issues, you can just drop a new antenna on and you're good to go. The last problem that I had was these little standoffs that hold down the camera, the 3D printed camera mount. Um, they kept coming loose, and as I was flying, I'd hear this tick, and it was the, the standoff would unscrew, and then it would hit the prop, and the prop would just shoot it. So uh, that's not good. I guess you need some Loctite or something on there. I've lost two standoffs already, so I found a substitute, but anything will really work just to hold down that camera. So, all right, now, the good. Obviously, I talked about it having power. This thing is just so much fun to fly. Um, the props. I've been super impressed with these DYS 2030 props. I would dare say call these indestructible. Um, I've crashed into a lot of things. Uh, steel poles, uh, the ground, uh, gates, uh, concrete walls, and these props just bend and they all get all funky and then you go back and kind of bend them back to where they look good and you just keep flying. I have not had a single blade chip or break. Now when you do bend them back you never get it just right and you start getting these really bad oscillations and vibrations because the blades are no longer balanced. So um, basically I flew this this set until the shakes and the quad were so bad that I was just like okay I need new props but none of them broke so if you can deal with the shakies and these props will last you for a very long time. I really like the light bar, that's something new for me and I think it looks fantastic and it's cool to see this like glowing balls like rip through the air. I'm also on the fence about this aluminum uh, roll cage thing. Uh, I did not like it at first and I had the intention of just ripping it off but I left it on and I'm really glad I did because as much as I dislike the aesthetics of it and how much weight it adds it really does make this something you can just throw around and crash and not really worry about. So I would recommend leaving the aluminum hoop on. Um, sometimes it does get a little loose, but you can just peel this foam back with a Phillips head screwdriver and tighten it down and you're ready to rock and roll. But it has really saved this little camera from a lot of abuse for sure. Now it comes with one battery and this battery rocks. It does a great job. You get about three minutes of flight time, three and a half minutes if you're taking it easy, um, which is a lot less than my brushed, but hey, I'm putting down a lot more power, so I'm okay with that. You're gonna want a lot of batteries to keep this thing in the air. And um, I've purchased a, a wide variety. All of these packs are two cell and I soldered on the XT30s and they still run really good. Now they don't have like the oomph, the, the absolute punch that the um, stock battery has or that these batteries have and that's to be expected because they don't have um, the discharge rating that uh, the GN3, I don't know how to pronounce it. It's all, it's all in the description, check it out. But these would be the batteries that I'd recommend, either a stock one or one of these. But if you've got two cell batteries laying around, you can easily convert them over and it will work great. If you wanna see how I set this up in Betaflight and got everything working with my transmitter, you can click up here. And that's more of a technical video showing you how to set things up. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you enjoyed seeing a new little brushless micro on my channel and I will see you next time.